Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'm in the UK visiting my good friend Shmi150, checking out a very special car, one I've been really excited to film for quite some time. Tim, can you elaborate a little bit more? Yeah, so we're at London Morgan and we're taking a look at their demonstrator, Morgan Aero Coupe. It's going to be really exciting. As always, this is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the Morgan Aero Coupe. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, go to the performance data, take it on a drive through London and show you many of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, fire it up, and let her run. This particular example is finished in Matterhorn Silver and comes paired with a premium diamond quilted red leather interior with high gloss piano black veneers. In order to start, all you have to do is go ahead and insert the key and turn the vehicle's power on. Then put your foot on the brake and hit the green engine start button to go. The Aero Coupe features an electro-hydraulic variable ratio power steering system routed through a small diameter three-spoke flat bottom steering wheel. It's wrapped in hand-stitched leather with perforations to either side and silver trim surrounding the airbag cover. It takes two turns to lock and has a 32-foot turning radius. Earlier Aero 8s were only available with a six-speed manual transmission, but with the introduction of the Series 4 in 2008, ZF's HP26 six-speed automatic was offered for the first time, in addition to a standard six-speed manual sending power to the rear through a limited slip differential. The automatic gearbox seen here is two modes, Sport and Auto. While in Sport mode, gears are held all the way to redline, while throttle blips on downshifts aid to smoothness and acceleration responsiveness. Thanks to a special lock-up clutch, low power loss design and relatively quick gear changes, the auto is a few tenths of a second quicker to 60 than the manual. You can even shift the car manually via the bespoke gear lever or by the steering wheel mounted panels. Headlights are on the right hand side of the dash, and your hazards and rear fog lamp is located within this push button stack in the middle of the dash. Power windows located on the door, and we'll go ahead and check out the exterior. If you've been following this channel for a while now, it should come as no surprise that I have a great affection for classic cars. I believe there's a lot that can be appreciated from the timeless designs that came out during the early 20th century, especially luxury and sports cars in the 1930s, such as the Bugatti Type 57, Cord 812, Auburn Speedster, and more. They're rolling works of art that speak to your emotions, their classic lines, stunning proportions, and sheer presence. These associations are all I kept thinking about when I first saw the Aero Coupe in person, and just some of the many reasons why Morgans are some of the most unique and special vehicles out on the road today. To recap a bit of background, HFS Morgan, the company's founder, created an innovative three-wheeled runabout in 1909, which, due to overwhelming popularity, would subsequently lead to the creation of the Morgan Motor Company in 1910. Morgan's designs and construction techniques are firmly rooted in the traditions passed down through generations, blending old-school construction techniques, modern technology, and proper performance. 
That being said, things remained pretty consistent after the 1950s, where the general models such as the 4-4, Roadster, and Plus 8 have for the most part stayed true to their original formulas. In fact, I was recently able to experience another one of Morgan's latest products, the three-wheeler, reintroduced for 2012 after an approximate 50-year hiatus. Inspired by the Morgan Supersport of the 1930s, it too employs the same engineering and design elements as its predecessors, combining steel and wood, not to mention a front-mounted V-twin motorcycle engine. We can go on and on, but the reason we're here is to talk about the most innovative and groundbreaking Morgan in recent time, the Aero 8. Originally designed as a roadster, the Aero 8 was unveiled back in 2000 and was the first Morgan of its kind. Designed to take the brand to a whole new level of prestige, offering a premium sports car that was both lightweight and powerful. It bears some resemblance to the Plus 8, but the Aero's styling is far more streamlined, sculpted and elegant, perhaps even futuristic in a way. Where the Aero made great strides is an all new rigid aluminum chassis weighing about a third that of steel. The chassis is bonded with aircraft grade adhesive and secured with rivets, quite a difference from the wooden tub and steel chassis of traditional Morgans. The Aero's chassis is made from 32 individual parts that for the most part are bent and formed by hand, a process that takes about 4 hours per chassis. Like other Morgans, the Aero also incorporates ash wood, only in this case it's used to form the framework for the superformed aluminum body panels. The frame takes three days to complete, secured together using a combination of high strength wood glue and stainless steel screws. Before it's secured to the aluminum chassis, the frame is pressure treated and dipped in a special preservative for long term durability. Wood has always been a Morgan hallmark for its flexibility and impact absorption properties. It's also lightweight and strong. The mesh grille up front looks like a fine piece of jewelry. The vertical bars are entirely welded by hand, ground down, and polished to perfection. At the time of the coupe's introduction, the Aero 8 had progressed through four series or generations. Rather than being linked to all new models, each series brought a number of styling and performance updates that subtly improved the lineup over the years. A gradual evolution that spawned a number of special Aero derivatives in the process. For example, the Series 2 improved over the Series 1 by adding BMW's new M62 4.4 liter V8 engine, boasting more power and better efficiency. Width was expanded for greater interior room along with improvements to the suspension and more. Production for the Aero Coupe actually didn't begin till late 2011, debuting as a 2012 model. It was the last new Series 4 Aero product before the release of the Series 5. It's a more practical and performance oriented derivative of the Targa Roof Aero Super Sports. Primary inspiration for the Super Sports came from the Morgan Aeromax, the first time an Aero product appeared in coupe form, originally built as a one off project for one of Morgan's clients back in 2006. After proper demand was determined, the Aeromax concept entered production in 2008, limited to just 100 units between then and 2009, which was coincidentally Morgan's centenary. In addition to its signature split window boat tail rear end and bold rear quarters, the original Aeromax concept was the first Aero to sport a fresh styling language that would then be adopted by the Series 3. The Series 3 included restyled front wings, lights, and grille assembly, while continuing on with the updated 4.4 liter BMW V8 that debuted with the Series 2 as mentioned before. The original Series 1 and 2 cars used headlights from the new Volkswagen Beetle, which was understandably met with some controversy due to what many described as a cross-eyed look. Of course, that's subjective. The updated styling uses headlamps with integral washers and lower fascia fog lamps that were borrowed from many. The Super Sports and Coupe, like the Aeromax, feature full vertical LED tail lamps within clear housings and the signature boat tail rear fascia treatment. The Series 4 Aero 8 Roadster was launched in 2008 before being dropped from the lineup the following year to make room for the Super Sports in 2009 and the subsequent Coupe in 2012, as the two primary models after the limited run of the Aeromax. Series 4 cars also received revised air intake and exhaust ports in the front wings. Additional inspiration for the Coupe stemmed from Morgan's racing division in the Super Sports GT3. Nothing else differed between the Super Sports and Coupe in terms of styling, including what looks like to be an identical rear roofline treatment that carries flying buttresses that cradle a lightweight carbon composite deck lid. It looks somewhat like a big guitar pick. With the introduction of the fifth generation earlier this year, the Aero 8 Roadster reappears as the Super Sports and Coupe are phased out. Of course, there are many bespoke options including colors, finishes, and components, so your Morgan Aero can be a proper extension of your personality.
The Aero Coupe came standard with a set of 18 by 8.5 inch alloy wheels, while this example features a set of optional high gloss black Aeromax style 19 inch 14 spoke forged alloys, manufactured by Ray's Engineering. They're wrapped in 225-35 tires in front and wider 245-35 tires in the rear, able to hold around 0.96 g of lateral acceleration. Bringing the car to a stop from 62 miles an hour takes just 117 feet thanks to a four-wheel internally ventilated AP racing braking system. Composed of 13.8 inch discs in front and 13.1 inch discs in the rear, clamped down by six piston and two piston monoblock calipers respectively. This one features optional red calipers. Anti-lock brakes and electronic brake force distribution are also standard despite no stability control. A system known as drag torque control prevents the rear wheels locking when too low a gear is selected on a damp surface during rapid deceleration for better control. The suspension is fully independent and features unique long cantilever upper arms and lower wishbones in front with inboard Eibach coil springs over Coney shock absorbers. In the rear there's long transverse upper and lower wishbones with cantilever mounted fully floating inboard coil springs and shock absorbers. No anti-roll bars were fitted leaving the handling portion and body control up to the suspension engineering and spring rates. Overall length is 163.3 inches with a width of 68.9 inches and a height of 49.1 inches riding on a 99.6 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight depending on how equipped is around 2,600 pounds with an even 50-50 weight distribution with one passenger. The two aluminum bonnet panels unclip by two chrome retainers on either side. Once raised, a prop rod secures them. Old school felt strips protect the paint across the cowl and firewall. Replacing the 4.4 liter V8 in previous Aeros, the Series 4 Aero 8, introduced for 2008, benefited from a larger and more powerful 4.8 liter V8 shared with the BMW 550 and 750 that would carry on in each model that followed in the coming years including the production Aeromax, Super Sports, and Coupe. The all-aluminum 4-cam 32-valve engine is naturally aspirated and features BMW's double Vandos variable valve timing system a compression ratio of 10.5 to 1 and a red line of 6,500 RPM. In Morgan's application, the engine produces 367 brake horsepower at 6,300 RPM and 370 pound-feet of torque at 3,600 RPM. That's an improvement of 13 and 11 percent respectively over the 4.4 liter and a little higher than BMW's applications. With the optional sports exhaust, horsepower is raised to 390. The most amazing thing about this vehicle though is how it sounds. It packs so much bass and volume, not to mention constant crackles on deceleration. Hands down, it's one of the most addictive sounds I've heard in a while. While rear exit exhaust are available, the side pipes are just too cool to pass up in my opinion. Acceleration from a standstill to 60 miles an hour is expected to take in the neighborhood of 4.2 to 4.5 seconds, depending on which transmission you went with. The automatic was rated slightly quicker than the manual. Top speed is an impressive 170 miles an hour. With a fuel economy of 14.5 gallons, I estimate the Morgan to be between 13 miles to a gallon in the city and 26 on the highway, averaging around 19 miles to a gallon. The Aero's delightfully classic styling is echoed in the simple, handcrafted cabin that combines the finest leathers, woods, and aluminum components. The interior is unlike anything else I've seen in modern times and far different from anything else in its class. It looks like it was lifted straight out of the 1930s and fitted with some modern electronics. As with the exterior, the interior is entirely customizable, with the ability to choose patterns and hues of the leather and even the colors of the polished ash veneers that grace the doors and dash. This example has the diamond quilted leather that highlights the seats, center console, and doors and rear bulkhead. Along with the BMW engine and mini headlights we touched on earlier, the interior also sees a few bits of BMW switch gear along with chrome mini door handles. With all of the unique Morgan touches, it creates quite a visual treat to be honest. I love the flat engine turned aluminum dash which carries the Morgan logo on the passenger side. The seats don't have a lot in terms of adjustment, but they're pretty comfortable for what they are. They have good lateral support with big bolsters across the backrest. It's also a pretty intimate cabin overall. It is wider than the earlier generations like we talked about, but you still have narrow footwells and things like that. Its quirks just add to the overall awesome experience. So let's go ahead and hop on in and see how it sounds.
go ahead and shut her up. To me, this whole environment is about bringing everything back to basics and allowing you to really focus on the driving experience. I've said experience multiple times, and that's what this car is really about. It's an experience unlike anything else out there, I promise you. I love how simple the interior is. There's not a whole lot of electronic gadgetry or anything like that. I mean, the rear view mirror, the side view mirrors are all manually dimming, manually adjusting. You do have air conditioning, a premium audio system, and CD player, but that's about it. Across the middle of the dash, you have all of your warning lights and bank of buttons for most of the interior features from air conditioning to trunk release and rear defrost. The buttons have a nice click to them, which adds a little bit of a touch of quality. I also like the feel of the rotary dials to either side that correspond to your temperature off to the left and fan speed off to the right. Obviously, your radio is in the middle and there's hands-free Bluetooth, telephone, and iPod connectivity. The classic video gauges have contrasting white and black color scheme with your vehicle fuel off to the far right, tachometer, speedometer, and vehicle temperature. The wiper and signal stalks are typical BMW and you have cruise control down at the bottom. Alrighty. We'll go ahead and shut her down. And check out the rest of the vehicle. So let's go ahead and pop the boot. The entire luggage compartment is either accented in leather or finished off in premium plush carpeting. There's actually a lot more storage space than you'd think. It goes down quite a bit. There is a 12 volt power outlet in that little felt line glove compartment, as well as your media and iPod integration. The Morgan Aero Coupe is one of the coolest cars I've ever seen, from its showstopper styling to its incredible sounding engine. I applaud Morgan for creating such a unique sports car. If you're wanting to stand out from the crowd, I can't think of a better way than a Morgan Aero. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed Kyle's full in-depth review with the Morgan Aero Coupe. And because this car sounds so amazing, we did a full drive through London, and all of that commentary video can be found on Shmi150's channel. The link is provided in the description box below. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you on the next one. Take care.